Did the footprints? I would like to thank John Milanovic, who is going to lead the program tonight. He will be talking about the Native American Land Conservancy and their mission. Hello. Good evening. My name is Sean Milanovic, and I am from Agua Caliente. I'm a member of the Cuya Band. Miehwe Nenetu, Sean Milanovic, Nehensahina, Nekuktuska, Nehawe wa Cuya. At this time, I'd like to um, call Mike Madrigal up. I'm going to do a, a, a prayer and offer um, tobacco to the four different directions. We're going to start in the west. This is where the sun sets. This is where the ocean lives. We want to acknowledge this direction with tobacco. And we say, Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. 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 To the north, we pray the direction of, of knowledge, the direction where the deer people come from. And we want to say thank you. Aloha. Aloha. To the east, we pray, and this is where the sun rises. And we want to say thank you to the sun for all of its energy that it gives us. And the Colorado River is in the east, and that water feeds thousands of people. And we want to acknowledge that, that river body. Aho. Aloha. To the south, we pray, and this is where the owl people come from, the time of of sleepness and the San Jacinto Mountains, Santa Rosa Mountains, where we come from, and we acknowledge these old mountains that give us life where our people originate from. Aho. Aloha. Yompe, yompe, hippayo, hawele, yompe, yompe, hippayo, hawele. I want to talk about the people that have lived here since the beginning. There are many, many groups of Native Americans that have traveled through this valley. Their songs include these dunes right here. They've built trade routes all through this area. In this area this is the traditional territory of the Serrano and Chemehuevi Indians. I want to share the story of creation from the Cahuilla people. A long time ago, in the very beginning, it was all black and darkness. There was no earth, there was no water, there was no people, there was only darkness. These, these forces of energy, these flashes of, of light would come together. They tried to wrap around one another, but then the energy dissipated. But on the fourth time these energies came together, these energies, they represent Amna'a, the greatness of all things, and Tukmiat, the night. But on this fourth time, those energies, they wrapped around one another and they created an embryo. The embryo grew, grew very, very fast and, and, and very, very large. There were two beings in, in, inside. There was two, two male brothers growing in, inside. And as these brothers were growing in, in, inside the egg sac, they started thinking, you know, what should I do? What should I do when I get out of here? Where will I go? What will I do? So these, these two brothers, they fought and, and they quarreled. And when it, when it came time, they rocked back and forth to get out of the egg sac. So th these two brothers, so they were living beings like us, but they were just floating in, in darkness. And they thought, well, what should we do? And the older one, Mukat, he said, well, I know what we should do. And the, the little brother, he said, well, I don't know what we should do. And Mukat said, well, we will, we will smoke the tobacco. And from there, we can clear our minds and our thoughts. And we'll know what to do after we smoke. So Mukat pulled from his heart. He pulled out tobacco from his heart. Samayawit, he pulled out he pulled out the pipe from his heart. They loaded the pipe and then they pulled from the east where the sun is. They had the fire, they began to smoke. And as, as they smoked, Temayawat asked, you know, what is the oldest direction? And Mukat said, 
It is right here, right where I'm sitting. And he was sitting right here, right here in the West. And that's how they said, this will be the oldest direction, the West. So from there, they knew what they were supposed to do. They would create the earth. And again, they pulled from the hearts. The two brothers, one pulled out black mud, the other brother pulled out white mud from, from their hearts and began molding the earth. Once the earth was done, they decided that they would create people. Mukat, he made his people, he worked very slowly, very slowly. And he took his time making sure the people had two legs, two arms, one head with, that had two eyes. His two eyes could look forward. The younger brother, he made his creatures real fast. And they didn't have all the ten digits. They were webbed. Their fingers were webbed. And the older brother said, why did you do that? And he said, so that you know I could scoop up the water. But then the older brother said, well, you won't be able to, to climb. You won't be able to hold on to anything. The brothers fought over the people that, that they were making. They fought so much, the younger brother got mad and he took his huyanawit, his staff, and he, he threw it down into the ground. The earth shook and a big hole opened up. So the younger brother took all of his creatures and they went down inside the earth. The next day, when the sun came up, they heard these birds and the people could see one another. And Mukar heard his people talking and he knew that was the people that he had created. And then from there, the people began to meander around the world and populate the world. One thing I want to say, how did the people get on the earth? How did that happen? Mukat, when he first put his people down, he put them down at the base of the Santa Rosa San Jacinto Mountains to our south. For the Cuya people, the Santa Rosa Mountains, San Jacinto Mountains are very important. This is our point of creation. This is where our, our people came in, into existence at the beginning of time. For the Serrano people, the creator passed away, so they started to burn his body. As they were burning the body, the people had circled the pyre. The coyote came along, the trickster, he came in underneath through the legs and he grabbed the creator's heart. And when this happened, the eye of the creator popped out into the, into the mountains to our west of here, the, the San Bernardino Mountains. But the blood from the heart that Coyote had was dripping. So down to our, our south, we have the Painted Hills down in the Coachella Valley. And that area is real sacred because that's where those mountains are, are red. The, um, the clay is red. So the landscape is very important to us. We have our stories that go back, you know, thousands and thousands of years since the people have, have been living here. We have connections to the landscape all over this region. When we look out here, what do we see that's important out here? These dunes right here, are people saying about these dunes as they migrated from the river, as they migrated east. There's trails all throughout the desert and on our way out here, we pass through Bristol Lake. That's an ancient dry lake bed and the people would collect salt there and there's trails that lead out to that lake where the people collected the salt. And there, there are hundreds of springs all throughout these mountains that, that surround it. And, and one of the closer ones is over here, Bonanza Spring. And there was a large village there at, at one time. This entire landscape is filled with stories. Stories from the point of creation, stories that our ancestors traveled, and they created songs on these travels. So the songs we sing come from these travels that, that we journeyed on from our migration. I want to say thank you all for letting me share a little bit about this area, about the history. Aho, alawa, thank you. Uh, 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 uh.
We made that journey all of America three times uh, in search of our home and exploring and meeting new uh, plants and animals and peoples and places. Coming right back here to Southern California where we were first made.